Hey, what's going on friends? It's Brainbean here again. And as of today, Razer has released a new wireless suite of peripherals. Now I'm gonna be doing videos covering all three of these, but in this first video, we're gonna be taking a look at the new Death Adder V2 Pro. And because I'm always looking for ways to give back to you guys to say thank you, I do have an extra one of these to give away to one of my subscribers. I'll have all the details on how you can win that at the end of the video. But for now, let's go ahead and take a look at the new Death Adder V2 Pro. With the success of Racer's Viper Ultimate and then the Basilisk falling closely on its heels, I think the next question that a lot of people were asking were, where is the Death Adder, the Naga, the Lance Head, all of the other mice shapes that we love, but in this format? Clearly Razer was thinking the exact same thing because that's essentially what we're getting with the Death Adder V2 Pro. Although the naming convention is a little bit confusing for me, why wouldn't we just call it the Ultimate? But hey, this is where we are. Now, I do want to mention that the Death Adder for me personally has been one of my favorite mice shapes for the last seven years. And so there is a little bit of personal bias for me going into this video, but if anything, that makes me extra hard on it because I want the mouse to be good so I can use it in the first place. So with that, let's go ahead and check it out. If you're unfamiliar with the Razer Death Adder, it's a right-handed ergonomic mouse that's been around for quite a while, having seen over 30 versions over the years. And in my opinion, it's simply one of the best shapes for ergos. The Death Adder is definitely the OG ergo gaming mouse in the space. I used one as my main mouse for years up until the Viper Ultimate released. And if you are familiar with the Death Adder mouse, well, this is just more Death Adder. The Death Adder Pro has the same dimensions as the Death Adder V2. It's a larger mouse when looking at it next to the Viper, of course, coming in at 127 millimeters in length, 61.7 millimeters wide in the grip, and it weighs in at 88 grams, which is just six grams more than the Death Adder V2. And I think that's actually really impressive when you consider that the V2 Pro has to pack in the battery pack and the wireless tech on top of the standard guts that the Death Adder V2 has. Considering the overall size, shape, and weight, the Death Adder V2 Pro isn't quite as fast and sleek as Razer's lighter offerings like the Viper or their newer mini variations, but what it lacks in nimbleness, it definitely makes up for in the comfort department. Like I said, I've been maining the Viper Ultimate since its release, with some use of the Basilisk Ultimate when editing and doing that kind of work, kind of going back and forth, but for gaming for me it was strictly the Viper. Switching to test the Death Adder V2 Pro for me has kind of been like coming home after a long vacation. And for me personally, I typically use a claw grip, sometimes palm, depending on how intense things are getting, I'll kind of switch between the two. This works great on the Viper, but it can get a little bit fatiguing. The Death Adder V2 shape is great because it can accommodate a large amount of grip styles. Just keep in mind that it is a little bit on the larger side, so smaller hands may not be able to swing claw grip as well, but it definitely palms like a champ. And aside from its shape, in my opinion, what makes the Death Adder so great are those super large, comfortable thumb buttons. In my opinion, we just don't see this enough these days on mice. And when you have a lot of mice with those tiny little thumb buttons that they're hard to hit in a hurry, as somebody who binds a lot of vital functions to those thumb buttons in just about any game that I play, I find this to be a godsend. The placement feels really natural, and this time around they have very little pre-travel, almost none at all, certainly less than the Viper Ultimate has. There's a nice tactility and click when activating them as well. In terms of build quality, this version of the Death Adder feels really solid. There's no frame creak, and I noticed that on mouse 1 and 2 they actually have less wiggle than on previous versions of the Death Adder. Overall build quality here feels really nice. Talking about the grip and feel, the Death Adder V2 Pro features a sweat resistant coating that has a bit more texture to it than previous releases. And on this version of the Death Adder, for the first time, the textured rubber grip goes all the way up on both sides of the mouse. Now I didn't really notice this as my thumb and fingers don't really kind of venture to that part of the mouse naturally anyways, but I do think overall it does give a better impression impression of quality if nothing else. Getting into the buttons, the Death Adder V2 Pro is an 8 button mouse. Mouse 1 and 2 features Razer's new 2nd gen optical switch. The only real difference between the 2nd generation optical mouse switch and the last generation is Razer's increased the tactility on the switch. Or at least that's what they're telling me. I didn't notice this at all. Going back and forth between all of my other Razer mice that have the Gen 1 optical switch, I just didn't see this at all. In fact, I kind of feel like the Gen 1 switches had a little bit more tactile feeling to them, if anything. 
Now, I don't know if I got a pre-released version and the final product is gonna feel a little bit different, but I just didn't really notice anything here. And just so you guys can hear, here is a quick sound test. You also have mouse 4 and 5 on the side of the mouse like we talked about, and two buttons just behind the scroll wheel which come bound to DPI settings by default. The clickable scroll wheel does have a familiar feeling to anybody who's used the death adder before. Rolling it, it's not overly tactile, it kind of feels like rolling over smooth bumps. It's definitely a little bit less resistance and tactility than Razer's other more recent mice releases, but that's actually by design on this particular mouse. There's also a profile button located under the mouse for changing one of five onboard profiles. You'll also notice on the underside of the mouse, again making an appearance on the Death Adder V2 Pro, they're now standard PTFE feet on the mouse. In the RGB department, we do have the classic Razer logo in the grip, and that's about it. Now let's start with the most obvious change, as you can probably infer by all the comparisons we've talked about with the Ultimate line and all the shots with no cable, it's wireless. The Death Adder V2 Pro uses the same hyperspeed wireless that drives the Viper or Basilisk Ultimate, which is ultra consistent and actually is what finally converted me from being a devout wired mouse user when the Viper Ultimate dropped. There is one addition with this version though, you can toggle the Death Adder V2 Pro from traditional wireless or to Bluetooth via a slider on the underside of the mouse. Battery life here is pretty good, they give you 120 hours on a Bluetooth connection and 70 hours on the hyperspeed wireless connection. Now you can use this as well with Razer's dock, although it doesn't come with one like the Viper or the Basilisk did, so you will have to purchase that separately. Although if you already own one of those mice, you can do like I do and just swap them out as you need to use one of the other mice. Now, if you don't own one of these, you can purchase the dock separately, and I highly recommend you guys do that because it is just such a easy way to charge the mouse without fiddling with cables and stuff like that. Can't stress this enough, it is worth every penny. They do, of course, include a six foot Speedflex cable for charging and cabled use, though, if you don't wanna go the dock route. And like all of Razer's current flagship mice right now, this does feature the Focus Plus optical sensor, which I've covered in great detail in a couple of other videos that I've done. And so for the sake of not being too redundant for you guys, I'm going to skip that part on this video, but I will link the videos down below in the description where I talk about that if you do want to learn more about the sensor. The Death Adder V2 Pro comes in at $129.99, which puts it right in line with the Viper and Basilisk Ultimate if you subtract the cost of the charging dock. Now, if you already own a wired version of the Death Adder V2 and you're wondering if it's worth it to jump to the wireless version, in my opinion, the freedom the wireless provides makes it very difficult to go back to regular wired use, so I would say that it is worth it. Now, realistically, all we're doing here is adding another shape to Razer's already great lineup of flagship mice. Aside from the new Bluetooth capability, which is great, the second gen optical switches didn't really add anything new to the experience for me, so I would say if you already enjoy your Viper Ultimate or your Basilisk Ultimate, if you'd want the new shape, then that's there for you, otherwise you don't really need to run out and pick this one up. Now that said, for me, this is definitely the mouse that I have been waiting for Razer to make. It takes my favorite ergonomic shape, adds those big juicy side buttons, which I have been severely missing with the Viper Ultimate, and elevates them to that same level of capability, which is absolutely fantastic. So for me, this new Snakey Boy is definitely gonna be my number one recommendation for mice right now. Well, that's it for the video, guys. Like I said at the beginning of this video, before I started losing my voice, I do have one of these to give away to one of you guys to say thank you. All you have to do to be eligible to win that is, of course, be subscribed to this channel and hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about the mouse and be sure to include your Twitter handle so that I have a way to contact you. The only thing I ask is just please don't spam the comments because I use a bot to sift through that stuff and pick a winner and I will disqualify you if there's a bunch of spam entries. You can give this video a like if you enjoyed it to show yourself support. I hope you guys are staying safe out there. Take care of each other and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.